I'd like to read what two of the artists in this exhibition have described in the catalog. And the first one comes from Zoe Leonard. I like the way my neighborhood grounded me in the world with physical evidence of the past, of who and when and how. I began to realize I would miss all this, so I started taking pictures. I wanted a record. There is something more here than quaintness or nostalgia. It is a feeling of connectedness to the rest of the world, to language and economy, to history and struggle, to the endless supply of human solutions, to the problem of survival. I think I have a sense of what eminent domain is, but I think what I don't know is how could it really affect my life and how can my city really be changed by the government exercising its power of eminent domain. You know, if you came here by car or subway or even walking tonight, you were aided and abetted by the awesome power of eminent domain. Because without this power, we'd have no public roads, we'd have no sidewalks, we'd have no public transport. So I think we all understand that it can be very useful. We've come here tonight to discuss the uses, both good and bad, as well as the, the outcomes and the effects, both negative and positive. Well, basically, eminent domain is the power of government to take private property for a public purpose. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution consecrated that right, but also said that government had to pay just compensation. However, there has always been a very strong anti-takings sentiment that government should not have the right to take anybody's private, that private property should be sacrosanct. A neighborhood is so much bigger than a person. And when bulldozers come in and they destroy a neighborhood, they are destroying this collective precious fabric that you cannot buy, you cannot build, you can only make by living together over time. We can distinguish between providing clean water for the city and providing land for a developer to build luxury condos or a private basketball arena. I have a hard time in New York City understanding how the stadiums in the arenas, which are uh, receiving deep subsidies, how these get built when kids don't have a place to play. Now we've gotten to a point where the only way it seems we can have a park, a new park in Brooklyn, is to have it be, in effect, a yard for a massive luxury condo. There's a certain kind of left discourse, which I certainly participated in, which had to do with like people who were displaced from neighborhoods were destroyed forever. But it's really wrong. I mean, many people, both in New York and around the world, who were displaced from neighborhoods go and form new neighborhoods and create new possibilities. How many of you have seen something, some version of Fiddler on the Roof? One of the fascinating features of 20th century is that it's like the people who were expelled from places like Anatevka created the culture of the Lower East Side, which was enormously rich. People who were displaced and traumatized in one way, um, their lives aren't over. And in fact, sometimes it attunes them to possibilities of life. Some groups can manage if the circumstances are right, but we are always in medicine looking at all groups. If you take all groups, what happens? So what if you pile on displacements, as we have over the past 40 years, then you get a situation of health problems, and you've created what physicians call comorbidities, meaning illnesses that are going together. You can easily find someone who, through these processes of displacement without mitigation, came to be addicted to drugs, and got infected with AIDS, and has asthma, and has obesity, Human beings flourish in fairly stable conditions. And part of this context of modernity is a world that's changing very, very, very rapidly. Community isn't just the physical location. It's the set of relationships between people. You take away the physical location so people have no place to gather, it can destroy those relations. Now, I'm not the nostalgia, and I'm not saying nothing should change, uh, because everything changes. But People in a democracy ought to have the right to participate in a process of change. If you're not in a democracy, then change happens to you. You're a victim. You're the subject of change. You're not participating in that change. That's what it's all about. Yeah.